Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Above the Fold on this day after Halloween. A pretty cool day outside on this November morning, but today we have Christian Tay back with us, and he had a fantastic story, a very in-depth story, if you will, called The Cost of Athletic Retention. It was a fantastic story, and it talks about a 25-cent activity fee increase for the students of the University of Central Oklahoma that they will have to pay, and that has to do with athletics. It comes out to about an estimated $85,000 but what the problem was, and it raised concerns with UCOSA, the University of Central Oklahoma Student Association, they did not go through that or the students to get it approved. It was just approved over the summer by university officials. Christian, go ahead and give us an overview of what Remington Dean, the UCOSA president, said, as well as Kevin, Kevin Freeman, rather, the uh, university's uh, vice president of operations. What did he say? What did you find out throughout this whole story? Yeah, this is kind of an, an interesting way that this happened. Um, speaking with uh, UCOSA president Remington Dean, he was saying that typically whenever there's a student activity fee increase, it does go to the student's uh, body for a vote. Sure. Uh, in the previous two increases, uh, $3 in 2013 and mm -hmm. $3 in 2014, it was put to a vote in the spring elections, uh, but this year it was not. And that, he thinks, c could create a uh, dangerous precedent when it comes to um, the new, pr and with a new university president coming in next right. year. But especially concerning since this is an activity fee increase that affects primarily athletic students. However, Kevin Freeman, uh, in speaking with him, that he said there's no direct policy that the University of Central Oklahoma has in place for activity fee increases. Sure. So while in the past they have done uh, student votes, it's they're, they're not beholden to do so, and it's in this case as it was a crisis, as he described it, it was in increased based on a current need and. Right. That's, that's where we're sitting. Okay, and, and with this 25 cent fee being added in, it now goes to a $14.50, which is what adds out to a total right after you add the 25 cents that students will be paying. What is it that that $85,000 is going to go to exactly? With this, uh, typically, interestingly enough, uh, whenever we've had previous activity fee increases, there's been about a 45, uh, 55 split, 45 to student, mm -hmm. activ student activities on campus overall, and 55 to the athletics department. Okay. This, the entirety of this 85,000 raised through the 25 cents is going straight to athletics. And this would cover, uh, half of it would go to increasing tuition uh, mm -hmm. waivers for student athletes, okay. of which at the University of Central Oklahoma we have between 500 and 550. And the remaining half would go to helping fund academic advisement initiatives that are now available through the uh, new what is the Sparks Performance Center right, right. that was opened earlier this semester. Okay, and, and you talked to Mr. Griffin as well, UCO's uh, athletic director. He was very chipper about it. He liked yeah. it, and of course, I mean, being the athletic director, you know, you get some funding, that's great. You know, they just built the Sports Performance Center, which is an awesome building as well. But what, what was he so excited about, and why did he say he was so excited about it? Also, he talked a little about academic advisement. So what did you find out there? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, of course, um, uh, Director Griffin, he, of course, was over the moon because this is sure. a great funding opportunity for mm -hmm. athletics, especially because uh, where the crisis and this crisis situations come from is over the last 10 years, uh, tuition waivers for student athletes have not increased with the increasing costs of sure. tuition. So that has meant that student athletes haven't been able to get the most from their uh, tuition waivers. Mm -hmm. So this would essentially make it uh, ease the burden on student athletes as they try to keep up, you know, here at the University of Central mm -hmm. Oklahoma. But also, the, from his perspective, the more we fund the athletic departments here, that also has a positive correlation with UCO's recruitment efforts. Sure. Um, as he describes it, uh, UCO's uh, athletic program is the front perch of our recruitment efforts, mm -hmm. and especially as UCO has been the winner of uh, 19 uh, national championships, yep. mm -hmm. that is a perfect way of attracting more attention to the university. When it comes to academic advisement, specifically uh, with the space available in the Sports Performance Center, mm -hmm. there's now a dedicated um, advisement space. Um, speaking with Chris Brannick, the um, uh, information officer with the athletic department, he said they do employ three advisement officers, uh, which uh, where this gets interesting though is with about 500 to 550 athletes, mm -hmm. we have three dedicated advisors, however, and statistics released, uh, reviewed last year uh, regarding UCO's academic advisement rate. For the st student body as a whole, we had one academic advisor to 1,500 students, which the Oklahoma average is uh, 500 students to one academic advisor. So while the student body as a whole continues to have a much higher rate mm -hmm. of 
uh, advisor to student ratio. Sure. Athletics continues to have a remarkable rate of approximately 166 students per academic advisor. Right, and that's among three advisors. And also something that Remington Deed said, or discussed rather, for, for UCOSA, they had an Uber, a, a like Uber deal that they did, and, and it helped students get around and things like that. That also was cut in funding and things like that due to problems with the state funding and stuff. And they said that also could have been funded. What did he talk about that? Yeah, that is uh, uh, one of the major concerns that UCOSA has had is they have several programs that they would like to implement as well as continue implementing. Right. Uh, the Uber program has especially been uh, a major priority for UCOSA mm -hmm. because this has helped with students. Uh, it's provided free Uber rides. Sure. Uh, I believe it's about, I think it's like, 15, I think it's like 15 rides a semester. Okay. Oh, <coughs> and it's provided that, that per student. Um, and the thing about this is it's been especially as helpful for the international student population. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, oh, yeah. Oh, and everything like that. Um, last year, uh, in April, they just about ran out of funding for the program. Wow. Uh, and that was when they were funded at around $70,000. They had to get additional funding from the high impact fund that UCOSA had. Okay, okay. But this year it's been reduced from about 70,000 to mm -hmm. roughly in somewhere in the 40,000. Okay. Uh, Remington said the problem with this is is probably somewhere in February, UCOSA will be r completely out of funding for the program and trying to figure out where they can get additional funding to get this sure. uh, uh, program that benefits the entire student body. How they're going to do that, they still don't know, but mm -hmm. that's that's his major concern also right uh, did he correlate that with the academic or the uh, increase for the for the student activity fee with the athletics department was he basically saying that it should have gone to this or it could have gone to other things was that what the whole deal was that was it it could have gone to at least and as far as he's concerned the 45 to 55 ratio should have at least been maintained because okay he, he agrees that there there's something of a need there for the athletic students right, right. But that shouldn't mean that it should come at the cost of the remainder of the student body. Right, and especially when you talk about that helping international students. There are plenty of international students in this mass communications department that this helps. I know several of them that don't have vehicles and things like that that would help them get around and stuff. And uh, that that's just, it. what a story, Christian. It was very, very in-depth. You got all the information out there. Thank you for describing it. To our viewers today, this has been Above the Fold with Austin Brissett and Christian Tayback. Thank you to all of our Vista reporters out there and everybody that's a part of our U Central media team. Again, Austin Brissett with Christian Tayback with this week edition of Above the Fold.